If you follow me, you'll know that I'm a car buying specialist, and for every one car that I buy, I'm actually inspecting four or five per day. That equates to about a thousand cars per year. One of the critical inspection processes that I do on used car purchases is identifying a car that has highway miles on it versus city miles. Now, if you ask most people, they'll tell you that low miles is the right way to go on a used car purchase. Well, I'm here to tell you it's not how many or the amount of miles that are on a car. It's the type of miles. In this video, I'm going to go in depth as to why that is so important. To illustrate highway miles versus city miles, I'm going to be using two drivers with different driving behaviors. One I'm calling Highway Howard, who has a 50 mile commute one way to work, and the other one is City Sioux, who has a five mile commute. Highway Howard is driving highway, and City Sioux is driving five miles. Now I'm using the extreme illustration where Highway Howard would be exclusively driving highway, and City Sioux exclusively driving city, but it's to try to prove my point of how important this really is. Both of these drivers over the course of the duration of the distance of 500 miles will be having to cold start their car every time they get in it. Now, Highway Howard, since he drives 50 miles, is going to have 10 cold starts, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whoops. So he has he's got ten cold starts, right? Now the reason cold starts are such an important thing to mention here, and this is just the beginning, but it's very crucial, is that cold starts is where most of the wear and tear are happening during the life of an engine. Those first few seconds before the proper lubrication can get to those critical areas to lubricate them properly and get up to uh, operating temperature. Now City Sioux, by the way, has a different type of commute and she's cold starting her car a hundred times, right? A hundred times she has to do this, right? So a lot more, in fact, 10 times more. She's got a hundred times cold starts for that 500 miles, whereas Highway Howard only has 10 times. That alone is an extreme example of wear and tear. The role of oil is to avoid metal to metal contact, of course, by providing a full film barrier under operating conditions. However, at rest, the engine is going to be in a hydrostatic state. And during a cold start, you do not have that full film barrier but rather boundary lubrication, and that is not ideal. Before I move into the transmission portion of this presentation, I want to mention, since I have this graph up, about condensation burnoff events. That's what I call them. Uh, condensation occurs when you have intense heat going on in the combustion chamber, meeting cooler elements of the engine, the oil, and the exhaust system. Now, every time that happens, that's a cycle. That's a, that's a condensation burn-off event. And in City Sioux, you have a hundred of these events happening, right? They're just -da 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 -da, over and over and over again. You're going to have presence of water. It has, to, it has to get burned off, right? And the only way that's going to get burned off is by running it a long period of time. Now, that brings up Highway Howard, who only has 10 of these condensation burn-off events. This is going to result in a lot more oil life than City Sioux. But there's other things at stake here, and that's what I'm going to go into next. So now the uh, trans transmission will also be called into duty in each of these cold starts. And guess what? it's going to be cold too. It's not operating at optimum temperature and it's going to have to go through a sequence of warming up. And in this case, there's going to be a lot of cold shifting here. Now, that alone is a problem, but then you add to that the fact that there's going to be shifting sequences that City Sioux will encounter because it's a lot of stop and go, stop and go, stop and go traffic, 
whereas Highway Howard is cruising along at highway speeds without much shifting going on in that 500 miles. So if you compare uh, the amount of shifting sequences that have to happen, you'll see that City Sioux will have a lot more uh, than Highway Howard, and this will also be a lot of cold shifting, which is not a good idea. I'm going to revisit the condensation issue briefly. Uh, this time will be on the uh, exhaust. Now you have the catalytic converter, which then goes to the muffler, and then you got the tailpipe, right? And if the exhaust system does not get heated up properly to operating temperature, you're going to have the presence of moisture in there at all times. The proverbial grandma's car, where she only drove it to church and back, and it has very low miles, is going to have a problem with the exhaust system because she never eliminated the moisture inside the exhaust system. And these are not particularly cheap uh, items to replace on a car. So just beware of that. Another part to the wear and tear between these two drivers will be the braking sequence over that same 500 miles. Now you can imagine that Highway Howard during that 500 miles will apply his brakes a certain amount of time, but generally he's just going down the road and not having to do so. Whereas City Sioux, it's going to be stop and go, stop and go, stop and go all the time. And that's going to equate to the brake sequences being far more frequent on her car than it is his car. Now, finally, City Sioux's car is going to have problems with the engine, transmission, and the exhaust. But there's also other things that you might not think about when comparing a highway-driven car to a city-driven car, and that includes more door dings, uh, bumper scratches. Uh, there'll be lots of wheel and tire damage from hitting curbs. You're going to have additional wear on the seat because she's going to get in and out of the seat a lot more. In fact, 10 times as much as Highway Howard. You're going to have seat belt wear. The blinkers will be used more. The radio, the ignition is going to be used 10 times as much. The sun visors, uh, the suspension from potholes are going to be impacted. Uh, curb rash on the wheels, the window regulators. The list goes on and on. Even things that you wouldn't even think about, like the key remote, will be used a lot more in City Sioux's car than Howard's. The Department of Transportation estimates that the average commuter spends 42 hours of their life per year idling in traffic. Now that's idling, and there's no miles being put on the car technically while that's happening, and yet you're incurring wear and tear on the engine and that's not good. It's even higher in the bigger cities. Now I source my cars from outlying areas from the city because even if someone is doing a highway commute in the city, you're going to find that they're still going to have the same type of commute that Sue has, which is stop and go with rush hour and congestion. So uh, I totally avoid buying any cars in this metropolitan area. I go to outlying areas where people have much longer commutes and that's where the superior cars are located. Now, my clients always ask me, how do you know that they're highway miles? How, how do you ever know that? Do you just take uh, the word of the person that uh, you're buying from? And sometimes it's at a dealership where you're not talking to the owner, so you don't know that. And the answer is that there's several ways to prove that out through an inspection. In fact, I have a video on that, and I'll post it right here and it'll walk you through the steps on how to identify the things that you find on a highway-driven car that you don't find on a city-driven car. So just remember that there are seven steps to finding a high-quality used car. Identifying highway miles is just one of them. Uh, I'll provide a link here to my ebook where I have all of those seven steps mapped out for you, and it'll take you through all seven of those step-by-step so that you can get a great car. I'm Greg, your car angel. Thanks for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I appreciate that. I'll see you in the next video.